Hello, well, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fur video. We're going to have a look at whether for next week, 10 days, for today's fur video day, Tam will take us to the 8th of March. And uh, we'll be able to set up your map with the external GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS meeting at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that will get us well into the second half of March. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. <laughs> Just say that first video today was the uh, 6 a.m. upload. And we've released the big one, the spring forecast uh forecast for spring 2023 is released from gas so check it out see what we're forecasting and um it's an interesting forecast actually uh this spring so um you now a lot of times spring tends to fade into the background and um gets overshadowed by winter and summer um but i think this season could be quite interesting actually it could be a rather different type of spring so anyway have a look at that and see uh, what we're predicting. If you could please like, share, subscribe on the videos. We only need to put on around 30, under 30, now, probably around 28 subscribers to get ourselves to 15.6k. Uh, so if you could give us a sum and tell friends and family to subscribe as well, that'd be absolutely incredible. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with Stratosphere, latest developments, because why not? Not looked at this for a couple of days. So the temperatures at 10 to 8 pm are starting to uh, tick back up again. Of course, out of a sudden stratospheric warming, uh, like a week or two uh, ago, then a drop down in the uh, temperature at 10 8 pm stratosphere over North Pole, but still above average, still above the grey line, and temperatures are ticking back up again right now at uh, 10 8 pm. Go a little bit low down to 30 8 pm. There we see that warming is also taking place, a little bit more pronounced actually at that level. So, um, again, we have a sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, a week or two ago, then a drop down, and now we're lifting um, back up uh, once again. And this next warming is going to be enough to send the wind into reverse, not just at 10 HPA, but also at 30 HPA. So this is the latest temperature forecast from the uh, GFS 6 Well, Again, you can see the uh, yellow colours we're seeing over top of part of the next warming. Not overly dramatic, really, but certainly going to be enough because the solar wind is so weak anyway. going to be enough to send that zone of wind back into reverse. And this time we, we will reverse the zone of wind up 30 HPA as well as a 10 HPA. So this is how the forecast is looking over the next few days. Another warming trying to gather uh, itself and get going there around the 5th of March over uh, Siberia there. Again, that one pushing into the uh, North Pole to a slightly lesser degree. And then we just finish up looking like that. So, um, you know, it looks very, uh, the polar, stratospheric polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere about 10 HP, looking very ragged, stretched, under stress, and, uh, and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, so this is the latest uh, forecast um, for polar vortex status, I should say, from weather is cool. They're saying that the uh, SPV is currently weaker than the era 5 average and is forecast to remain weaker than average, uh, according to the GEFS, GFS ensembles. Uh, SSW probability in the GEFS is 100%, as we are going to get. No reverse of zonal winds again, starting tomorrow, actually, at 10 HPA. Um, and they're saying that the zonal mean zonal wind at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north, is today at 1.1 uh, MS there. So uh, just ever so slightly positive with the uh, zonal wind. But it is going to go negative again, as I say, um, tomorrow. So uh, this is how things are looking in terms of the uh, zone of wind, the blue line there, where we currently are, just ever so, ever so slightly above that zero line. So zone of wind is just ever so slightly positive today. But if you put in the GFS, look at this. The zone of wind is going to be going negative again, quite significant. So date records will be um, achieved, I think, for the negativity of the zone of wind uh, as we get to the end of February. Um, and saying weaker than average, saying you know, uh, in reverse into well into March by the middle of March, we might see zone wind going back into positive territory. Uh, once again, so like this isn't the final warming um, and reversal of zonal wind of the uh, of the season. That will happen a little bit later on into the spring, either in April or May, probably. Um, but the zonal wind, you know, it's going to be in reverse for a, a good week at least there uh, by the look of it. Uh, once you get to the end of February and into uh, March. And as I say, date records look like they're going to be achieved for the uh, negativity of uh, the zonal wind there. Um, right, this is from University of Berlin. 
telling us that tomorrow at 10 8 p.m. Minnesota wind will go really quite negative indeed into reverse at minus 8.1 uh, there. That's 27th of February, uh, of course, and uh, low down. Uh, or I should say day, uh, day 10, rather, on the 7th of March. It's generated last night, of course, based on yesterday's uh, ECM trials, everyone. But um, uh, day 10, 7th of March, uh, still negative at minus 8.1. Uh, going to 30 HPA, we find that it takes about a day longer, but by 28th of February, um, we're down to minus 1.7. There, we are so reverse as well, at 30 HPA coming in the next few days as well. And uh, still in reverse at day 10 on the 7th of March at 30 kph. So still basically confirmed in the strategy. We're still waiting to see what, if any, effect it's going to have on the troposphere. Um, I think this second reversal will actually have more of an effect than the first reversal. So I think the first reversal was quite dramatic, but I think that's like softened things up for this second reversal. I think it probably be the second reversal that does the damage. So if you're looking for a troposphere response, I would be looking like two to three weeks after this second reversal. And that is going to get us to right both middle um, middle of March, like week two, week three in March. That is when I would be expecting, if we're going to get a troposphere response by a blocking, we'll start to uh, see it. So uh, a little bit earlier, maybe, than a little bit later, I should say, than maybe uh, people were anticipating after the first reversal. Zone. But we should wait and see. You know, don't always get a response. That's one thing to remember. You don't always get a tropospheric response to a stratospheric warming. But given we are having a double dip reversal, um, I think I think we should get a tropospheric response. So just wait and see what happens, and we'll keep Keep posted. Uh, right, central England temperature is currently sitting at 6.7, which is 2.9 degrees uh, above average. That's provisional to 25th of February. That will carry on edging down over the next uh, few days until we get two months. Then, means of a GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles that could reach the red line with a 30 year upper air temperature average from Colchester. Another suggested location for this uh, part of the video. Starting off colder than average at the moment, and we're going to keep things cold and average um, until we get into the start of uh, March with those upper air temperatures uh, there. Uh, slight tick up in the upper air temperatures there by the end of the uh, coming week. It will be under high pressure though, so. We won't necessarily realise that tick up in the upper air temperatures. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, on goes the uh, scatter. So, uh, as we get from the first week into the second week of March, look at all this scatter we've got with the milder ensemble members up here, the colder ensemble members um, down there. <laughs> yeah, it's been going on for days and days now. It's still not really all that clear cut, other than maybe GFS ensembles have backed off the idea of things turning colder. No, even colder through the first week into the second week of um, March. But there is a lot of scatter within there. There will be lots and lots of different scenarios and options that the GFS ensembles are playing with. The white line should be ensemble means still a little bit below the long term uh, 30 year average. So, you know, it's not trending mild particularly, um, but possibly backing off a few of those colder. Um, options and scenarios. But that said, there's still a lot of cold options there, uh, these ones down here. So it remains a case of just going to wait and see where things go as we uh, go through the first half of March. Precipitation, well, it could be loads of dry weather uh, through the rest of February, what's left of February, and into the first week of March. Second week of March might start turning a bit more unsettled, but of course, that is the same range, and given things are so and so, again, there's so much scatter, and there will be a lot of different scenarios, therefore, playing out within the uh, GFS. I wouldn't necessarily be um, all that confident about things turning unsettled through the second week of March. I think we'll wait and see about that. Temperature anomaly is on the 26th of February, 6th of March, coming out below average, cold average week to come, especially so for England and Wales. Precipitation anomalies from the 26th of February, 6th of March, still looking very, very dry, uh, driving average through uh, most of Europe, actually. Away from Southern Europe, anyway. Well, well, well. Right, let's move on that from uh, NorthSchool.net. Shows that high pressure is dominating weather and sat right over top of the country today. There it is, sitting over Scotland and to the south of that. We're bringing in this rather chilly northeasterly wind. Okay, let's start going through chart data. Memory Satellite UK Met Euro Run is looking for mid 
uh, midnight um, on Wednesday. High pressure still there over Scotland, still bringing that rather chilly east northeast wind to England and Wales. Now, the UK Met, look what the UK Met's doing, takes that high pressure further north as we get into weekend. So that scenario is still at play here, but uh, northerly winds might start uh, digging in um, next weekend. So that actually turns quite cold with the UK Met. Uh, next weekend, we've got a proper area of high pressure there, bridging through Iceland up to Greenland. The real cold is over northern Europe with this trough of low pressure. But I'm not sure if you have bread temperatures. We are bringing my tens of ice berm into northern and eastern parts of the country. And most other areas are quite cold. So the UK Met um, actually looks like it's turning things colder next weekend. And it will bring a risk of snow showers into northern and eastern areas. Now, compare that to ICOM, which, again, on Wednesday has a high pressure in the same position, sitting over at Scotland. Where does high pressure go after that? Well, it tries to reach northwards up to Greenland and Iceland, but we don't quite pull in that cold normally. So just keep the ridge through the country. Most of the cold with ICON is kept over northern Europe. Most of the real cold. We are chilly under that area of high pressure. We've got minus five thousand icebergs. So it's not a mild ridge. It's a cold ridge. I mean, it would be overnight frost and whatnot. But my 10 cells ice plan, the real cold, it's up across northern parts of Europe. It's not that far away. You know, it's not that far away from uh, what the UK Met is doing. So, <laughs> as I said, we continue to be really complicated what's going to happen with this area of high pressure. Will we send it north? Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is how uh, the uh, GFS Big Dike Run uh, was looking. High pressure once more. Dominating the weather on uh, Wednesday, sitting over Scotland. Um, high pressure does not go north with GFS Big Dike Red, just stays centre over top of the country, no sign of a ridge pushing north or screen Iceland there. And as we get up towards day 10 and beyond it, we actually start sending high pressure southwards and into uh, um, a, a more unsettled Atlantic flow. So, um, start to bring some shade rain in off the Atlantic there through the second week of uh, March. GFS 6 there. Uh, once more, has a high pressure in control on Wednesday, centred over Scotland. Um, Thursday, trying to get that high pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, but again, not successfully so. But a little bit more of a ridge on the sixth there, I think, for the weekend compared to um, uh, compared to midnight run. However, by Sunday, again, this uh, sort of short wave feature here around Iceland's running in over top breaks with chance of high pressure going north. As I said, we just have high pressure still centred over top of the country. And then, similar with the six zone, as we get towards day 10, high pressure still in control, but beyond that, high pressure begins to slip southwards, Atlantic areas of low pressure start to uh, take over and it begins to turn more unsettled through the second week of March. Albeit the south will probably still be quite dry, but the north will be more unsettled. Maybe just a hint there of the heights pulling out towards the northwest. This is a possibility of how we might turn cold into the second half of March. We might pull the high pressure out to the northwest and send it towards Canada and uh, set up initially like a cold zonal flow with uh, the low pressures coming in on a northwest southeast alignment. Eventually, that might evolve into like northerly blasts. Um, that's the kind of thing that happened in the spring of 2008. Um, in the second half of March and through into the first half of April. It was kind of what happened with that, you know, cold interlude through that spring is that um, we, we set up like a cold northwesterly flow initially and then we started getting some northerly. So that's a possibility and something to keep an eye on. Uh, right, if you're enjoying this video, then please can you like, share, subscribe, thank you so very much everybody for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we thank you so very much everybody uh, for uh, for doing that. Around 27, 28 subscribers going to get us to 15.6k so if you could give us a sub uh, and tell your friends about to subscribe. That would be incredible. Thank you so very much. Now, the GM is interesting today. Watch this. High pressure over Scotland on Wednesday. And then as we go into uh, next week, you start reaching that high pressure towards Green Iceland. So that's more in line with the UK Met and um, also ICON uh, rather than the GFS. Uh, we're very close to pulling in a cold northerly there through next weekend. 
Um, so by the time you get through to Monday the 6th of March, 192 hours, a long way out now, much of Northern Europe very cold with this trough of low pressure. We are uh, seeing a cold ridge of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland and low pressure from the Atlantic beginning to move into that cold air. And actually, we set the battle lines up. The battle lines are drawn there uh, with the cold air across most parts of the country, milder air trying to come in from off the Atlantic. And this will suggest a chance of some snow, actually, as we go to day 9 and 10, this low pressure coming in from the Atlantic at an angle that keeps the cold air in place ahead of it with these sort of southeasterly uh, winds. So that really is battle lines drawn type stuff there, and uh, that could deliver a bit of snow event in some parts of the country on the GEM. Look how below it's really struggling to make progress northwards and eastwards as it comes up against all this cold air sitting to our northeast. If you're in this yellow air, then it's only going to rain. Um, if the uh, upper air temperature goes to zero degrees or above, it will always rain. It might be freezing rain, depends on what the dew points are doing on the surface. So you can get freezing rain if the dew point is above zero degrees. But it will always rain. It's between, um, you know, between light or, or to the north, I suppose, to the north and the east of, of that black line of, 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 uh, of the yellow colours, anywhere in this green area, it could it could snow, you know, on the northern side uh, and the east side of that area of low pressure. Uh, anyway, but, you know, just one run, but quite interesting from the GM. And then the ECM looks like this. High pressure is again sitting over top of the country on Wednesday. Uh, high pressure trying to reach up towards Greenland and Iceland through next weekend. We are close to pulling in some very cold air with an area of high pressure around Iceland over the weekend. Most of Northern Europe is looking very cold air. Just don't quite tap into it as we do with, let's say, the UK Met. Um, nevertheless, by uh, the beginning of the following, so this is Monday the 6th of February, I think we're looking quite cold there, especially in more northern and eastern areas. Let's see what the upper air temperatures look like. Um, so, yeah, pretty cold in that area of high pressure, that ridge there on uh, Monday the 6th of March. Um, relatively dry, but quite cold. And then beyond that, the high pressure then starts to slip away, and lower pressure begins to come in from off the Atlantic, but at a different alignment that wouldn't suggest anything particularly wintry going on just like a band of shadow rain coming across the country so I can drink inches wider air from the southwest so not going for that battle lines drawn type thing that the GEM is uh, doing that's how the upper air temperatures look at uh, day 10 um you'll notice it's very cold across much of Europe we're not that far away from it at all so we have got to watch this space about how the uh, weather next weekend and beyond that in second week of March evolves. This is the precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tometio.com. There will be some showery bursts in the south and east over the next few days, but with high pressure control, the emphasis is on dry weather until around days sort of uh, 8, 9, 10, and then shower rain starts coming in from off the Atlantic. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 8th of March from the Icelandic Met Office. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, including... Uh, including the control and the operation run. All options have a ridge of high pressure over and slightly to the west of the country and reaching up towards Greenland and Iceland. Trough of low pressure bringing a real wintry bar blast into northern parts of Europe. And we're just on the edges of that, just on the periphery. Now, to each time, these are the options that we've got. So, 19 members of the ECM ensembles collapse the ridge down to France and bring low pressure in from off the Atlantic, so that's up to milder, wetter and windier. 11 have the high pressure more towards the west and the northwest of the country. That's on the periphery then of, uh, of cold weather to the north things, but it's mostly anticyclonic. 11, genuinely cold and wintry, with proper blocking around Greenland and Iceland, low pressure to our east and south winds in from the north east, that's the coldest option. And then 10 have uh, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, very unsettled and uh, Atlantic driven weather with uh, those 10 there. So a range of options and possibilities, as you'd expect in what's seen within the GFS ensembles. Actually, I can go back and show you the uh, ECL ensembles. Where are the tabs? Here we go. I'll show you the ECL ensembles. You don't look at those very often. Where are they? Up here, right. These are the ECM ensembles. Um, let's see, we go to the midnight run. 
There they are. So uh, that's how the ECM ensembles are looking for cold chest. We don't show these very often. I should show them more, actually. So um, cold initially, of course, over the, over the next few days. Bit of a tick up in the upper attention there. More defined cold uh, interlude there uh, from the 4th to the 8th of March, something like that. And then right towards, um, you know, the extended, starting to uh, see an increase in the uh, in the upper air temperatures, lifting the upper air temperatures up. But certainly, like for the first week of March, the ECM is more defined with being quite cold uh, compared to, like, the, the GFS, which in this period has a lot of scatter. Precipitation wise, also very dry through much of the first week of March, and then a bit more unsettled as we get into the second week of um, March. So, there we go. I don't show you those very often, but I should include the ECM ensembles more. Uh, really, right where I am. Tabs, there we go. Okay, just have a look at the surface we share. we're done to be supplied. Bunch of middle bar height anomalies broken down into weak periods. The first week period will take from the 26th Feb to the 4th of March. The coming week will be dominated by high pressure over and sorry to the north of the country. We'll bring in that northeast wind, which will make it feel quite chilly, especially so in the south. Week two is going to be the 5th to the 11th of March with high pressure. Uh, around uh, France and uh, reaching northwards. Uh, we have got blocking in place, but not quite in a position to bring anything cold. Most of the cold is going into northern and uh, northeastern Europe with that trough of low. Um, week three will be the track to the 18th of March. High pressure around Spain, low pressure over Scandinavia. We're very close to turning things quite cold there. Um, but they're just not quite right. And then week four. Um, now, this is the I talked about earlier. This is the 19th, 25th of March. High pressure then sort of pulling out into the Atlantic, going up towards Canada, uh, which would send the jet stream on northwest southeast alignment with low pressure through here. And uh, that is one route that might start turning colder into the second half of uh, March via uh, an issue of cold northwesterly flow. And then we will wait and see whether that high pressure goes up to Greenland and sets up a genuine northerly or not. That will be something that we may have to look out for uh, if we don't get like proper northern blocking going from this SSW. Um, the other route that things might start taking colder would be from a northwest south east alignment to the jet stream. Anyway, we'll wait and see. If you enjoyed the video, please thank you. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment and uh, let us know what you got this all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids. And uh, we thank you so very much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Another 27 or so subs going to get us to 15.6k. And uh, that's incredible. Thank you so very much. Right, just so coming up tomorrow. So now 6 a.m. upload. There'll be a day in the 14th. I'll be live streaming Ensembles Watch at uh, 6 p.m. as well. No, 8 p.m. What am I talking about? Even I'm getting confused with the live stream time. It's been a long winter. Um, no, uh, the live stream will be at 8 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, I mean, it's 6 p.m. on oh, Wednesday. Um, no, uh, live tomorrow with our Simon's Watch at 8 p.m. I shall see you then uh, for that one. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.